Next, I'm going to talk more about the playback engine. Now, here as you can see, currently I'm using the Mbox 2 Pro for my playback engine. So that means all my audio will be going through and processing through my Mbox Pro. Now, here are my settings for that. We have our buffer size, our host processor, and we also have our CPU usage limit. Now, CPU usage limit has to do with how much usage of the processing power within my Mac or your Windows computer it's going to use for your Pro Tools application. That's why it's important to have probably no applications running at all in Pro Tools. It's very important, none at all but Pro Tools, whatever is necessary to run with Pro Tools. As you can see here, we're set for the default value of 85%. That means the other 15% is going to run for the operating system. I prefer to run it there. If I need more power, I'll go to 90%. But in this case, I will need more power. Also, the host processors, you only have one or two. Now, sometimes you can have your machine maxed out. In this case, mine's only one or two. That's what I need. If you do, you may want to go to, say, it's eight, you may go to seven, the nearest most, to save processing power. But in this case, I'll use two. Next, I want to talk about the H slash W buffer size. Now, the hardware buffer size in the playback engine controls the size of the buffer used to handle um, host processing tasks, such as processing audio or real-time RTAS plugins, called real-time plugins, audio suite plugins, or to also use to process the recording of vocals, recording of maybe a drums, recording the guitar into the system. Now, the problem we have with this sometimes is latency. Latency has to do with the ability for you to hear back a sound or hear back something you're recording. They're recording it and you hear it, but they're hearing a little late in the headset. This happens a lot when you're doing vocals. The vocals will sing something, but it'll be coming back slowly. So it's not a real-time recording. It's like, you know, it's a computer takes a little time to process what's going on and then gets it back to you. To solve that problem, what we do is that we'll normally use 64 bits here, or the lowest amount, of the samples. So 64 samples here, sometimes 32. You will use 64 when I'm recording audio. And this way, it'll handle it better and I'll have less latency when recording my audio. Next, I go up here to 1,024 samples. Now I may go here because I don't care about the latency at this point. I want to use more processing power. So remember this. When you're going to do mixing and you're going to do the process of getting the RTAS plugins plugged in, put in there, everything going properly in the mix, well, look, we want to use more samples. I may go to 512 to make it easy. When I'm doing vocals, I'll go to 64 samples. But the standard default here on my system is going to be 512. Here we also have, this is errors, ignore errors that happen during the playback or recording process. Now, if I do that, what will happen? I get these pops and clicks. I don't want that, so I never check this box at all. Now, next we have here a thing. This is called our um, delay compensation engine. Now, I'll explain more of this later on in other videos, but for right now, what this engine does is a setting in the playback engine that determines how much DSP resources are dedicated towards the Pro Tools delay compensation. Now, what this matters is how much delay happens when using, like, a, say, a delay, like an echo, hello, 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 and you apply this to a vocal. Now, the problem that happens sometimes is that it sort of, like, drifts sometimes. It's not actually really right or too short. But what the compensation does is that it allocates a minimum resource for the delay compensation for each channel. And this is the most efficient setting, probably, to have, which would be, would be the short setting. I'll show you this right now here. And this is the most efficient setting right here. See, this is the amount of delay you can have per channel, whether short or long. But I'll explain more of this later on in our lessons. Now, right here we have, this is our DAE buffer disk right here. See? And this gives a default. Now, you'll notice here it says here, lower values for the disk buffer reduce disk latency. So the system becomes more responsive. That means we have less latency in this disk. Or we're going to record this at the same time while playing it back. We're going to have that response move faster. Now, higher values will improve 
this performance. Don't be worried, or worried about it. But normally, I keep it to default. I don't have a real problem, and you shouldn't either. Just make sure you also have, when you are recording, you're recording to the external hard drive. That's important to do. Next we have here, it's either normal for the cache, reduce memory use, or we can use large, which improves the performance. I just use normal. There's never a problem with that for me. Now below here, you see I have plug-in streaming buffer. Is level two right there. So this is the default setting right there. And it sets up so that our buffer can use a certain amount of memory. Now you see blood says optimize for streaming content on audio drives and requires more system memory. So sometimes you may have to use this, but I really don't use it that much because my system is very powerful. So it's important when setting up your system and knowing which computer you're going to use, you need to make sure you have plenty of memory in there in the hard drive and make sure you actually have plenty of, of space on your external hard drive, and to make sure you configure your system so that you have uh, enough um, gigs for your processing speed.